Juice is a captivating and compelling movie that still resonates today. The film explores a range of universal themes, such as friendship, music, crime, betrayal, and ultimately, the tragic consequences of conflicts. Ernest R. Dickerson skillfully uses the characters of four high school boys, with particular emphasis on Tupac Shakur's character, Bishop, to pass on several resonating powerful messages that evolve into a warning. Set in the early 90s, Juice portrays the struggles of the black communities in America, an unfortunate era where they were grappling with the range of issues, from poverty to racism to police brutality and gang violence. But there's more to be discovered when analyzing the movie more closely. We can see that Juice tried to warn us about many prevalent problems in the world with a focus on the black community. However, these problems highlighted in the movie are not exclusive to the 90s, but still recur and exist in the black community today. First, Juice warned about the dangers of peer pressure and toxic masculinity. Next, it cautions against the glorification of violence and gangs. Additionally, the film highlights the intoxicative nature of power and its consequences. The movie begins in a typical 90s African-American setting, with a rap song playing in the background. We see four high school boys, Steel, Bishop, Hugh, and Rahim, waking up in their Harlem homes, preparing for school. However, it is evident that they are not enthusiastic about school, as they are often late to wake up. Boy, didn't I tell you to get your rusty butt up? I'm up, Pop. I'm up. Bishop, the main antagonist, comes from a somewhat broken home. His father is traumatized, and we later discover that it's because of his experience in prison. Bishop is shown as a loving son who tries to take care of his father despite his own struggles. On the other hand, Q's mother is more practical and advises him to attend a good school to secure his future. As the day progresses, we learn of the misplaced priorities of the teenagers. Steel and Q leave for school without their books, but with their speakers and headphones. The next scene takes us to the first warning Juice warns us of, the dangers of peer pressure and the impact of toxic masculinity. We see it when Rahim pleads with his baby mama to take him back, but she declines, citing his crew and their activities as a reason for his irresponsibility. In another scene, Bishop is walking down his streets when he's bullied by the Rodimus gang in front of a store because of his father's homosexual post-prison experiences, but he's rescued by Q and Rahim. With his friends around, he feels more powerful and initiates a fight with a rival gang, calling it exciting and calling it fun. They are joined by the fourth crew member, Steel, who feels left out of the attention his friends receive from girls and lies about having sex with a girl named Donna Bromwell. So how was it, man? That was good. What do you think, man? Skipping school, the crew visits a pool hallway to win money. However, things take a wrong turn when they are harassed by the police and Steel is arrested. Q and Bishop are chased by the police and decide to escape from a rooftop to another building. Amidst all the chaos, Q, who dreams of becoming a well-known DJ, comes across a poster for a DJ competition and gets excited about the opportunity. His friends mock him and downplay Q's aspirations. Despite the negativity from his crew, Q remains determined and they head to the music store to pick up his audition tapes. While there, the crew works together to steal the tapes, which they enjoy as they revel in their deviant gang activities. We are introduced to the criminal activities prevalent in the neighborhood, and we see another side of Bishop. When Q goes into a bar to get a cigarette for Rahim, he comes across an old friend, Blizzard, who has just been released from prison. Blizzard wants to rob the bar and asks Q to participate. Q refuses and heads out to tell the crew. Bishop is excited about the idea. However, the rest of the crew tries to convince Bishop of the dangers of Blizzard's actions. As the story unfolds, we see the crew's differing attitudes towards danger and crime. Q is focused on pursuing his dreams, Rahim looks out for the crew, and Bishop is hungry for power and excitement, even if it means putting themselves in danger. Bringing us to the second warning that Juice gives us about, the glorification of gun violence and gangs. Bishop romanticizes and glorifies the violent ending of a movie and praises the villain for taking his destiny into his own hands. He sees this act as a way of taking control of one's life and being the master of one's own fate. We see a news report of Blizzard's death during the robbery. Bishop's friends are shocked by the news and are grateful they hadn't been involved in it, but Bishop sees it differently. He goes on to rant about the weak status of their gang and tries to incite the group to exert more violence to prevent them from being harassed by the authorities and rival gangs. Bishop cites Blizzard's death as an example and argues that they need to have the juice, even if it means dying for it, as Blizzard did. You gotta snap some collars and let them motherfuckers know you had to take them out! However, Q disagrees with Bishop and points out the possibility that they could have all been killed if they had assisted Blizzard. If we was dead, 
he was the MV5 that niggas instead of one. The two get into a heated argument, which is eventually broken up by Rahim. As the movie progresses, we see Q talking to Rahim on his staircase, and Rahim informs him of an important meeting for the crew scheduled for the next morning. Q, however, puts his DJ dreams first and tells Rahim that he won't be able to make it as he has his DJ audition in the morning. Rahim understands, wishes him the best of luck, and asks him to meet after the audition. Q practices for his audition and goes for it the following day, where he gets shortlisted for the competition. He is thrilled with his victory and walks down the street happily to meet his friends in the courtyard. However, when he tells him of his triumph, Bishop changes the topic to a more dangerous one. They tell Q of their plans to rob the store owner, Quiles, on Saturday, the same night as his competition. Although Q doesn't like the idea and wants no part in it, he is convinced by Rahim that no one will get shot and it will be an easy operation. Bishop labels him scared for refusing. This nigga's scared! But he doesn't want to be seen as a scared little boy, so he gives in to the pressure and agrees to do it. Bishop is elated by their plans. The moment he gets the gun, he feels the surge of power coursing through his veins and wants to keep it. Bishop is consumed by the rush of power that comes with possessing a gun. He becomes fixated on the idea that he now has the power to decide who lives and dies. A dangerous delusion leading to the third warning. Power is intoxicating and always comes at a price. Q wins the first round of the competition and they head out to carry out the robbery. The robbery quickly goes awry when Bishop, drunk on the juice, shoots Mr. Kiles without realizing what he's doing. The crew retreats to an abandoned building where an argument breaks out over Bishop's actions. What the fuck you have to shoot him for, man? You didn't have to shoot him. Rahim and Bishop get into a fight over the gun, but Bishop refuses to let anyone take his power and shoots Rahim without a second thought for trying to take the gun away from him. He takes the stolen money from Rahim's pocket and runs off to evade the police. Now a cold-blooded murderer with two deaths on his hands. Bishop has now become so consumed by the power he feels from the gun that he no longer cares about his crew or anyone else. Q and Steele soon realize that Bishop has gone downright maniacal and is willing to kill them if they don't do as he says. Bishop orders them to head back to the club for the competition and hides the gun. At the club, Q is devastated by the loss of his friend Rahim and is unable to focus on his competition. The police arrive and Bishop informs Q nonchalantly that Rahim is dead before they are taken to the station for questioning. Bishop tries to pin the murder on Radames, but the reality dawns on Q that they are now seen as a gang. The aftermath of the shooting at the convenience store and Rahim's death leaves Steele in tears, Q on edge, and Bishop seemingly unfazed. The trio's relationship is forever altered as they try to navigate the aftermath of the violent incident. Bishop's descent into maniacal power becomes increasingly apparent as he clings to the idea that they can return to their former life. Q and Steele do their best to distance themselves from Bishop, but his delusions of grandeur only escalate. In a vulnerable moment, Bishop admits to Q that he is crazy and doesn't care about anyone, not even himself. He is resigned to his current fate and believes he cannot be anything more than he is now. He belittles Q for not wanting violence, insisting that he can decide whether he lives or dies. The trio's dynamic is further complicated when Bishop boasts to Steele about the power he wields with his gun. Fast forward to the next scene. Q and Steele watch in horror as Bishop gets confronted by the Rodamez gang, but they choose to stay out of it, leaving Bishop to handle the situation by himself. Despite being outnumbered, Bishop refuses to back down. The sound of police sirens breaks up the altercation, and he follows the Rodamez gang leader to a subway corner. But Bishop's thirst for power and control drives him to commit yet another murder. As the movie nears its end, Q was forced to acquire a gun for protection, knowing that Bishop's violent and aggressive behavior may lead him to harm. Yo, what's the matter with him? Just as Q is about to confess Bishop's murderous deeds to his lover, he receives a call from Steele, who has been forced to the pool hall by Bishop. Bishop comes increasingly consumed by his power and shoots Steele, pinning his actions on Q. As the movie climaxes, Q finds himself in a dangerous game of cat and mouse with Bishop. Q knows that Bishop is responsible for Steele's shooting, but he also knows that no one else will believe him, so he must take matters into his own hands. He sets up a meeting with Bishop at midnight. As he walks towards the meeting point, Q realizes how easily he can be intoxicated by the power of his own gun as he almost shoots a homeless man, but then he realizes it's the gun controlling him and throws it away. Meanwhile, 
Steele tells Q's lover, Yolanda, at the hospital the truth about Rahim's killer and Bishop's plan to frame Q. He shot everybody. He's trying to frame Q. Despite knowing Bishop will not hesitate to use his gun, Q tries to reason with Bishop, but it's met with hostility and violence. And Bishop shoots at Q, but he misses. Q is eventually shot in the arm and runs up to an elevator, with Bishop in hot pursuit shooting at him until he gets disarmed and loses his gun. In the movie's final scene, the fight continues up a rooftop, with Q desperately trying to get Bishop to stop fighting him. However, Bishop refuses and ends up tripping off the rooftop. Q tries to save him, but it's too late, and he falls to his death. The movie ends with a devastated Q leaving the rooftop, only to be stopped by a witness who tells him, yo, you got the juice now, man. Q knows that the pursuit of power and control can be a dangerous and deadly game. The tragic fate of Bishop in the movie Juice serves as a cautionary tale. Bishop's obsession with power and status ultimately led to his downfall, losing his friends and eventually his life. Bishop embraced gun violence and crime in his pursuit of power, glorifying it instead of condemning it. We can all see that Juice is a powerful film that resonates with the issues plaguing black communities today. It serves as a reminder that glorifying gun violence and crime must stop. Only then can we build a better world and community. What are your thoughts on the movie? Are there any other lessons you would like to share? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. We aren't just telling stories, we're changing lives and waking the culture up. If you'd like to further support this channel, click the links in the description below or leave us a super thanks. Any support will be reinvested into bringing you more high quality documentaries. Speaking of that, the video on the screen is another interesting story that you need to watch. Click on it now. We'll see you over there.